Hi everyone, in this video, we'll be going over A-Level Accounting 2020, February-March, Paper 2 to Question number 3. This is the structured Paper 2, which consists of 4 questions, 2 of them are of 30 marks and 2 of them are of 15 marks, and we're also given a total time limit of 1 hour and 30 minutes. And since question number 3 is of 15 marks, ideally, we should be spending about 15 minutes in order to solve this question, and in this video as well, we will be attempting to solve this question under 15 minutes. So without any further delay, let's get started. Eden runs a small business and has provided the following information for the year ended 31st December 2019. We are given the opening balance for trade receivables, contra, discounts allowed, discounts received, interest charged on a customer's overdue account, irrecoverable debt, receipts from trade receivables, return inwards, return outwards, and total sales. Then we are told that 20% of total sales are cash sales and the remainder are credit sales. Alright, for the first part of this question, we need to explain three advantages to a business of preparing control accounts. So the very first and the major advantage of preparing control accounts is that they provide a check on the arithmetical accuracy of the balances on both the sales ledger as well as the purchases ledger. And while doing so, it helps in locating the errors. And further, the balance on the control account should also be equal to that of the total of the individual balances. Let's write it down. They provide... A check on the arithmetical accuracy of the balances on the sales and purchases ledger. Then the balance on the control account should equal the total of the individual balances. Secondly, it helps prevents fraud and this is because of division of duties we know that different member of staff should be working on control account and its corresponding ledger accounts let's write it down helps prevent fraud through division of duties as different members of staff should work on the control accounts and their corresponding ledgers. And lastly, it helps in preparation of financial statements because instead of entering the individual balances, we can directly enter the total that we figured out from the control accounts. Let's write it down. Helps in preparing the financial statements as it is speedier to enter the total in the trial balance rather than individual balances. Okay, this concludes the first part. We can now move towards the second one. We now need to prepare the sales ledger control account for the year ended 31st December 2019. And remember that sales ledger control account is concerned with our credit sales. Let's have a look above. We were told that 20% of the total sales are cash sales and the remainder are credit sales. So let's figure out the amount for credit sales. That's going to be 80% of the total sales. We can see that the total sales is given to be 190,000. And 80% of it is just going to be times 0 
which results in 152,000. Okay, we first start with our opening balance. And remember that sales ledger control account deals with our credit sales, which means that these are basically the current assets which are yet to be received. And whenever we are talking about ledger accounts for current assets, its opening balances will be on the debit side. Let's write it down. And we can also see that we are given the trade receivables balance at 1st January 2019. So this is basically our opening balance. And it has a value of 45,000. Let's record it. That will be our balance BD with 45,000. Now let's have a look above. Okay, we're done with this. Then we have Contra sales ledger to purchases ledger. And remember that Contra is something that will reduce the receivables balance. And whenever we're talking about ledger accounts, all the reductions are to be recorded on the opposite side of the opening balance and in this case our opening balance is on the debit side which just means that we need to record this amount of contra of 780 on the credit side let's do that so that's going to be contra of 780 let's have a look above we then have discounts allowed and remember that we allow discounts on sales made which definitely reduces the amount that we are yet to receive and this reduction is again recorded on the credit side so let's record this amount of 1025 under the heading of discounts allowed. All right. Then we have our discounts received and discounts received is something that we get while making purchases and since we are talking about sales ledger control account discounts received is irrelevant in this case so we can just completely ignore this then we have interest charged on a customer's overdue account so we are basically charging interest from the customer and this is the amount that the customer is required to pay us which means that this again increases the receivables which goes on the side of our opening balance which is the debit side so let's record this amount of 65 under the heading of interest all right then the next one we have is irrecoverable debt and irrecoverable debt always reduces our receivables and this reduction should go towards our credit side so let's record this amount of 945 under the heading of irrecoverable debts okay after that, we have receipts from trade receivables. So these are the amounts that we have now received, which definitely reduces the receivables, right? So this amount of 128,600 should go towards our credit side under the heading of bank, since we assume that this amount will go towards the bank account for Eden's business. So that's going to be bank with the amount 128,600. All right. Then the next one is return inwards. And whenever we sell goods and those goods will be returned, it is termed as returns inwards. So this obviously is going to reduce our receivables, which means that this amount of 2,500 should be recorded in the credit side of our sales ledger control account under the heading of returns inwards. Let's do that. So that's returns inwards with the amount 2,500. Then we have returns outwards and returns outwards are the goods purchased that we return to the supplier. Again, in case of sales ledger control account, this is irrelevant. So we can just completely ignore this. And from total sales, we already figured out that the credit sales was of 152,000. So this definitely increases our receivables, which should go towards the debit side in our sales ledger control account under the heading of credit sales. So that's going to be credit sales with the amount 152,000. All right, this concludes all of the items. Now we can move towards figuring out our closing balance. Since the opening balance is on the debit side, the closing balance will be on the credit side. Okay, we first require our total. Let's figure that out by adding these three amounts from the debit side. That's going to be 45,000 plus 65 plus 152,000, which results in 197,065. This will be the total for credit side as well. 
Now our closing balance acts as the balancing figure and in order to figure this out we just need to de deduct these amounts from the total which in this case will be 197,065 minus 780 minus 1025 minus 945 minus 128,600 minus 2500 which results in the amount of 63,215. Okay, then the next step would be to record this closing balance as the opening balance for the new accounting period. So that will be balance brought down with the same amount of 63,215. Okay, this concludes the second part of this question as well as the entire question number 3 of 2020, February, March, paper 2-2. If you found this video useful, make sure you like the video and leave a comment below. And make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you do not miss any of these videos in the future. Thank you.